everything, you should know about inflation. The word inflation, derives from the Latin word inflate, which means to blow up or inflate. In 1964, if you lived in the US, you could have seen a movie for even less than $1, and had a McDonald's hamburger for 15 cents. The best part is that, you'll arrive at the movie theater, in your brand new 1964 Mustang, for which you paid only $2,320. It might be difficult to imagine, that some of our favorite things once had such low prices. However, it is important to know that, while the prices of goods have increased, so has the income. The average worker in 1964, most likely wasn't driving a Mustang. Because despite the Mustang's low price, the average worker made $1.25 an hour which was probably insufficient, to buy a new car. Over time, costs for goods, services, and resources, including labor, have gone up. Economists pay close attention to price changes, especially when they affect the costs of goods and services that urban consumers frequently buy. Inflation by definition is the steady rise in the level of average prices for goods and services. A shift in relative pricing is not what is meant by inflation. A relative price change is, when you observe that the cost of healthcare has increased, but the cost of laptops has decreased. In contrast, inflation denotes, pressure for price increases in the entire economy. Furthermore, price increases in the supply and demand model were one-time occurrences, that signaled a change from one equilibrium to another. Inflation, on the other hand, denotes a continual increase in prices. If inflation occurred for a year before ceasing, it would no longer be considered inflation. How we can measure, inflation, The Consumer Price Index, or CPI for short, is the most commonly used indicator of inflation. The CPI determines the changes in price level based on the prices of selected goods and services. Consider that the identical basket of goods, and services, could have been acquired for $100 last year but cost $103 this year. Simply calculating the percentage change in price level, yields the inflation rate, which in this instance would be, 3%. Is inflation beneficial, or destructive? The answer is that, it varies. As long as the inflation rate stays roughly steady, what economists refer to as, stable pricing, a moderate level of inflation, is considered healthy for an economy. On the other hand, rising inflation can hurt savers, those on fixed incomes, or those whose incomes haven't simply kept up with inflation. Let's say that, in the previous year, you spent all $100 of your income on products and services. The same items, you purchased last year for $100, will now cost you $103 due to inflation. Unfortunately, your income stayed at $100. The result is that you are not allowed to have everything you had last year. Your purchasing power has diminished. Additionally, if you have been saving, inflation may reduce the value of your savings preventing you from purchasing, as much as you had intended to. Also, if you anticipate substantial inflation, your purchase choices would probably change. What would you do, 
If you noticed that, the price of the watch, you were planning to purchase, had increased $10 every day. For 3 straight days. Most likely, you would anticipate that costs would keep going up, and rush to buy it. Before it is too late. In this case, panic buying would result in higher inflation. In fact, inflation make choosing between spending, and saving, quite challenging. Does anybody take notes about inflation? Monitoring the money supply and inflation is the prime responsibility of central banks. What is the reasonable rate of inflation then? There is no correct answer to that. The ideal inflation rate will vary from one country to the other. The US Federal Reserve argues that 2% inflation consistent over the long term, serves their objective for price stability, and maximum employment. Now, let's look at the various underlying reasons for inflation. When there is a greater demand, for particular goods and services, than what the economy can produce, inflation occurs. When demand exceeds supply, prices are under upward pressure which leads to inflation economists referred to this as demand pull inflation demand pull inflation may result from there being too many dollars chasing too few goods when the price of labor and supplies rise prices rise increased costs are subsequently passed on to the end users Economists referred to this as cost push inflation. Inflation may also occur if the money supply grows more quickly than the rate of economy's output. Devaluation of currency is also a reason for inflation. Devaluation is a reduction in a country's exchange rate. When a currency is devalued, imports become more expensive and the purchasing power of the currency is reduced. Additionally, certain policies may cause cost push inflation or demand pull inflation. Demand may increase when the government provides tax breaks for particular goods. If supply cannot keep up with demand, prices may increase. In reality, inflation is another form of taxation. When the government is unable to raise enough money to pay for its expenses, printing money is the easiest method to cover those costs. The purchasing power of the money decreases as more of it is being circulated in the economy. Inflation is thus a different type of governmental tax. So if the increase in price is bad, then the declining price is good? Not necessarily. A drop in the average price level, or a negative inflation rate, is referred to as deflation. Although inflation typically garners the majority of attention, deflation is also an important occurrence. Deflation may appear to be a positive development because who wouldn't like to pay less for their favorite things? Deflation, on the other hand, can seriously harm an economy. Like high inflation, deflation makes it very challenging to prepare for the future. So why has inflation become a hot topic? As most nations have their highest inflation level in decades, Inflation, is currently a big news story, around the globe. If inflation is the general increase in prices in an economy, what is hyperinflation? An extreme kind of inflation is called hyperinflation. 
when prices for goods and services rise steadily over an extended period of time, referred to as hyperinflation. Germany experienced hyperinflation, between 1921 and 1928. Just as Zimbabwe did between 2008 and 2009. German hyperinflation caused severe societal turmoil. The value of money plummeted to the point, where the German mark was practically worthless. Hitler blamed the Jews for hyperinflation. In 1914, the Papier mark, a German currency, was exchanged at 4.2 to the US dollar. In August 1923, one dollar was equivalent to one million Papier mark, and two months later, one dollar was worth 238 million Papier mark. Germany, in November 1923, a pound of bread cost 3 billion. A pound of beef cost 36 billion. And a glass of beer cost 4 billion. In November 2008, Zimbabwe's inflation rate reached to 79.6 billion percent. In response to the significant depreciation in its currency, Zimbabwe had to print a note, with a $100 trillion face value. Is there any way to combat inflation? Getting over inflation is not an easy task. So what can be done to combat inflation? Typically, a country's central bank is in charge of controlling inflation. Contractionary monetary policy is a more commonly employed method by central banks of lowering inflation. The primary objective of a contractionary policy is to reduce the amount of money in an economy. There are several ways to accomplish it. Increasing interest rates is a common strategy of combating inflation. Higher interest rates reduce consumer demand, which lowers inflation. Controlling the money supply is another popular strategy for reducing inflation. Since the money supply and inflation are closely tied, monetarists argue that reducing the money supply can lower inflation. Supply side policies are also helpful to combat inflation. These policies aim to boost the economy's efficiency and competitiveness, which will drive down long-term costs. Inflation can be controlled by implementing the necessary fiscal policies. Increased taxation lowers disposable income. Lower disposable income limits customers' purchasing power, which reduced inflation. Theoretically, Lower salaries, could aid in reducing inflation. However, this has not been frequently utilized, due to obvious reasons. Do you think wage cuts is a viable strategy, to reduce inflation? Share your thoughts in the comments section. But the question is, how efficient are the above tools? In theory, all of the above measurements should assist to keep inflation in check. In practice, however, none of the above tools have a proven track record. The good news is that, it doesn't prevent people from trying. Central banks, are constantly working to keep inflation at bay. The bad news is that, the activities taken won't improve things right away and they can even make things feel worse, over the short term. The emphasis is to contain consumer spending, and slow down the business expansion, by increasing the costs of borrowing, and increase in tax. In simple terms, the major purpose of all of the above is to persuade you, 
to temporarily stop making significant purchases. Contractionary monetary policy appears to be the preferred strategy for the majority of central banks to curtail inflation. Although, so-called soft landings are tough to accomplish. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing, which means a lot to me. I love to see your thoughts in the comment section.